Welcome to Peace. I'm coming to you from our outdoor worship space, where on Sunday mornings we gather those who feel comfortable, bring their lawn chairs, and service happens right here. It's an abbreviated service, of course, so we're so glad that you're joining our videotaped full service as well. We hope to see you out here one day when you feel comfortable coming in person. Today is also an exciting day for the youth group. There is confirmation class starting and to be followed by the youth group all gathering here in the fellowship hall. We will be so glad to be together again, of course, wearing masks and keeping a safe distance from each other. We hope that all has been well in your life and I'm glad you're with us today. Let us prepare for worship. gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which you have won for us, for all the pains and insults which you have borne for us. O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day.
together responsively. Almighty God, maker of all things, have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, giver of life, have mercy on us. I confess to God Almighty, before the whole company of heaven, and to you, my beloved in Christ, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and pray God Almighty to have mercy on me. May Almighty God have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, and give you time to amend your life. Amen. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my beloved in Christ, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and pray God Almighty to have mercy on me. May God Almighty have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, and give you time to amend your life. Amen. together again today. Today we have a really special story and it is one of your absolute favorites. So let's listen. After God made everything, God said, it is good. But then people began to do bad things. But God noticed that there was a special family. Noah and his wife and their sons and wives. Now, Noah came close to God and God came close to Noah. And Noah knew what God wanted him to do. He wanted him to build a great boat, an ark. And animals would come from the four corners of the earth. They would come in pairs. And they would enter this ark. Now God wanted Noah to build the ark because God planned to wash the earth clean again. And so when the ark was ready, the animals came and they entered the ark. wife and 
entered the ark along with their sons and their wives. And then it began to rain. And at first the rain was like any other rain, but it kept falling and falling. And soon the rain covered everything on the ground. All the water came together and it lifted the boat. And soon it covered all the trees. The water even covered the mountains. And the ark rose in the water and rose. And it kept raining. And the whole earth was covered. And then, after 40 days and 40 nights, the rain finally stopped. And God blew a great wind and it started to dry up that rain and that water. And so Noah took a dove and sent the dove out. And the dove came back to him. It had not found anywhere to live. And Noah waited a week. And then he sent the dove out again. And this time, when the dove came back, it had an olive branch in its beak. It found something green and growing again. And Noah waited a week and sent the dove out again. And this time, the dove did not return. It had found a place to make a home. Finally, all the water dried and the ark landed on the ground. And everyone was so overjoyed. The people came out and the animals came out of the ark. They were so grateful to be back on dry land again. And you know what they had to do? They couldn't help it. They just had to give thanks to God. So, they built an altar. And they gathered to give thanks to God. And then a giant bow of many colors appeared in the sky. This great bow. I know you know what it's called. A rainbow. That rainbow appeared in the sky and that was God's promise to never flood the earth again. And so the animals, they went off to the four corners of the earth and they made homes for themselves. And Noah and his family did too. Now I wonder, what part of the story do you like best? What part of the story is the most important? I wonder, what part of the story do you feel like you were there? Were you with the animals? Were you with Noah and the dove? I wonder what part of the story we could leave out 
and still have the whole story. I look forward to the time when we can be together again and all of you can work with the pieces of this story that you love so much. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Peacemakers, forgive. Her husband said he doesn't love her anymore. And it's worse than that, he's having an affair. She knows she needs to forgive, but she also needs to protect herself from further hurt. How? How does she move on? Oh no, my family member is drinking heavily again. Home life is crazy. How many times do we need to forgive? What does forgiveness even look like with this disease? He sits through an entire Bible study with them and then opens fire on innocent people who have welcomed him to church. He is not sorry. Should they forgive an unrepentant white supremacist? Forgiveness is hard, long, complicated work, but it is the calling of peacemakers who follow in Christ's way. So hear the gospel from Matthew 18, verses 21 to 35. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, the one who owed him 10,000 ta talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a 100 denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. 
And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all the debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember that Peter's question for Jesus is about another member of the church. And this passage immediately follows the passage about conflict management in the church that we read last week. Now, the Greek is not clear in Jesus' answer whether he is saying 77 or whether he answers seven times 70, which of course would be 490 times to forgive. Either way, it's a lot of forgiveness. And to expand on the point, Jesus tells this parable. Now in the parable, Remember, parables have multiple layers of meaning. Remember the boxes from godly play? Multiple layers of meaning. In the parable, the first servant is forgiven 15 years worth of income. He then is unwilling to forgive even a day's wage of his fellow slave. Now each time the, the slave begs for patience and promises to repay. In the first case, the promise of re repayment is unrealistic, but not in the second. So you would think that having been forgiven 15 years of debt, the slave would have been jumping for joy at this, this boundless mercy of his Lord and each eager to extend that mercy to the next person who begs from him. But no, there is no gratitude. There is no mercy in him, which makes you think he's not received the mercy he's even been given. There's only harshness. So when word comes to the king, what has happened? The mercy is withdrawn, the mercy that was never really appreciated, never really fully received. And the first slave is sent to be tortured. And if the story were not enough, Jesus then spells it out and says, so my heavenly father will do to you if you do not forgive your brother and sister from your heart. This parable is about forgiving debts, but it's bookended by words of Jesus, which make it clear he's talking about all kinds of forgiveness. It's also clear that the forgiveness in the parable comes or should come to those who are truly sorry and wish to be forgiven, those who are asking for mercy. This is an important point. So I want to emphasize it so you don't forget. The forgiveness in this parable comes to those who really wish for it, who embrace it. Remember also that Peter asked the question regarding another member of the church and Jesus ends the parable with talking about relationships in the church when he talks about forgiving a brother or a sister. 
when Jesus taught his disciples to pray in Matthew 6, in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, he said, and you've said this for many years, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. He then adds at the end of that prayer, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. It reminds us of the verses from last week where Jesus talks about what we bind on earth being bound in heaven and what we loose on earth being loosed in heaven. This peacemaking, this forgiveness, this reconciliation is a communal experience. And the parable teaches us to be as generous as God is generous. But it does not guide you to forgive people who are unrepentant. It does not teach you to continue to be hurt, abused, or taken advantage of by someone who is never truly sorry. So in the case of Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, we have Dylan Roof, an unrepentant murderer. Some of the congregation and family members forgave, and that was inspiring to all of us. Others have argued that the immediate expressions of forgiveness inhibited them from their true lament and from their calls for justice. And that, too, we can understand. Just as in the case of the family of George Floyd, there is a reason to stand firm for justice because to insist on a quick and easy forgiveness is to continue a pattern of excusing bad behavior. You see, forgiveness is connected to peacemaking because forgiveness seeks the shalom, the peace of the community, all the community. So to forgive the alcoholic is not to excuse the alcoholic for damaging himself and the lives of an entire family to perpetuate a pattern. No, the best 12-step treatments involve asking forgiveness and making amends. Forgiveness is connected to peacemaking such that it takes the work of two people in a marriage willing to put forth effort, able to work toward faithfulness to the covenant. Two people need to be willing to admit fault and to forgive for healing to happen in a marriage. And sometimes, sadly, a marriage must end for people to find their way to forgiveness and healing. We are mistaken when we assume that staying together always represents forgiveness and separating always represents the lack of forgiveness. Relationships are complicated. Peacemaking means having the same mind as Christ had, a mind that looks to the interests of others without losing God's purpose for yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Let us not forget the as you love yourself part. In healthy relationships, all need for love needs to be expressed and weighed against competing needs for love such that everyone is treated with dignity. God gives us gifts of grace over and over and over again. Gifts of mercy unceasing. And when we live in that 
place of gratitude for this mercy, then we find we are able to forgive. The most appropriate response to receiving gifts is to offer them. Think of a birthday party, children, where gifts are given. And then food and cake and games are offered to those who came bearing gifts. And then when you depart, you leave with party favors, the gifts that are given back to you for coming to share the celebration and bringing your gifts. Being generous as God is generous. That's what turns us into the people we are created to be. As Martin Luther King Jr. said, forgiveness is not an occasional act, but a constant attitude. As Mahatma Gandhi said, the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. Forgiveness is not about forgetting, you see. It's about letting go of another person's throat. Forgiveness does not create a relationship unless people speak the truth about what they have done and change their mind and their behavior. A relationship of trust is not possible. When you forgive someone, you certainly release them from judgment, but without true change, no real relationship can be established. Forgiveness in no way requires that you trust the one you forgive. But should they finally confess and repent, you will discover a miracle in your own heart that allows you to reach out and to be, begin to build between you a bridge of reconciliation. Forgiveness does not excuse anything. You may have to declare your forgiveness a hundred times the first day and the second day but the third day will be less and each day after until one day you realize that you have forgiven completely and then one day you will pray for that person for their wholeness these last words are from the best-selling book by William P. Young, The Shack, who demonstrates how tragedies in our lives can either lead us to a dark, scary place of bitterness and despair, or to a light and warm place of hope and joy as we release our demons and find in God's generous love a way to healing. For to forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that the prisoner was you. That's Lewis Smeads. And I end with a very short but grace filled poem of Mary Oliver, which will help us with forgiveness, which will help us with the endless pandemic, and will help us with many, many other problems. Mary Oliver, things take the time they take. Don't worry. How many roads did St. Augustine take until he became St. Augustine? Amen.
Please join us in affirming our faith from the study catechism number 131. What is meant by the fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer? Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We pray that a new and right spirit will be put within us. We ask for the grace to treat others, especially those who harm us, with the same mercy that we have received from God. We remember that not one day goes by when we do not need to turn humbly to God for our own forgiveness. We know that our reception of this forgiveness can be blocked by our unwillingness to forgive others. We ask that we will not delight in doing evil, nor in avenging any wrong, but that we will survive all cruelty without bitterness and overcome evil with good, so that our hearts will be knit together with the mercy and forgiveness of God. If you have anything against your brother or sister, or they against you, go and resolve your differences. Then come and make your offerings and experience the fullness of God's forgiveness. As we move through the season of peace, we are treasuring breads from all over the world. And today's bread is a molasses rich German beer bread. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy and everlasting God of goodness and mercy, we praise you for your unending love, which we see when we know you are creating and breathing life into our dust and bringing order out of our chaos. We thank you that you can be counted on to lead those who are bound to freedom and that you always rescue your wandering children to bring them home. And so we sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the Lord's name, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the Lord's name, Hosanna in the highest. Thank you, God, for sending us Jesus, your son, your very self in the flesh, bringing good news to the poor and release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. Jesus showed us the way of peace. Met with misunderstanding and with anger, he proclaimed your truth and your righteousness. We're grateful. We're grateful, dear Christ, that you took bread and you gave thanks and you offered it to your friends saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way you took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we pray, O oh God, that you will take this bread and this cup, a feast of grace, and through it nourish us making us an offering of your praise and thanksgiving for the world we proclaim the mystery of our faith singing together christ has died christ is risen christ will come again 
Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Spirit, you are here among us. You are everywhere your people are. So pour out your power on us. In this bread, in this cup, in your people everywhere, one in the body, one with Christ, one in ministry, peaceably together, loving and forgiving one another. All praise, glory, and honor be to you, O oh, loving and triune God, in community, forgiving all. Amen. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. God of all kindness, you have completed many miracles and even gave your only son because you loved the world so much. We pray for the peace of the world. Move among us by your spirit. Break down barriers of fear, suspicion, hatred, and indifference. Heal the human family of its divisions. Help us show forgiveness, not judgment, and unite us in the bonds of peace and love. We pray for our country, enrich our lives, heal our differences, strengthen the forces of truth and goodness. Teach us to share prosperity, that those whose lives are impoverished may move from need and despair to dignity and joy. And teach us to share ourselves, that all whose lives we touch may catch a glimpse of your sharing of yourself in Jesus Christ. We pray for those who suffer from loneliness, anxiety, and pain. Surround them with your love, Support them with your strength, console them with your comfort, and give them hope and courage beyond themselves. We especially pray for those listed in our bulletin and others that are in our hearts and minds. We pray for our families, for those whom we love, protect them at home, support them in this very difficult time, that they and we may stay safe and healthy grow together in mutual love and understanding, and rest content in each other. We pray for our church, keep us true to the gospel and responsive to the gifts and needs of all. By the witness of our faith, our worship, and our life, make known your saving power in Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear the call to discipleship from Romans 14, 10 to 12. Why do you pass judgment on your sister and brother or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow down to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. Freely we have received grace upon grace. Freely let us also give, let us give mercy and let us give money, let us forgive debts, let us be generous of spirit.
let us sing the doxology. Praise the Lord. because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's a boundless ocean of forgiveness. And the love of God, an endless, steadfast devotion, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, that's a unity which cannot be destroyed, be yours now and forever. Amen.